Hello and welcome to Getting Started with Stateflow Part 3. My name is Michael Carone. I'm the Product Manager for Stateflow. Uh, so this is the last part of a three-part webinar series. Uh, what we've been doing is building a state flow chart from scratch and introducing uh, the most important uh, major concepts of state flow uh, throughout the process. Uh, so, so far, uh, we've shown states, transitions, uh, flow charts in part one. And in part two, we show parallel states, truth tables, and temporal logic. And for the third part, uh, we'll be talking about, among other things, embedded MATLAB, simulating functions, and events. Uh, so if you have not yet seen parts one and two of this webinar series, you can find it by going to the Stateflow product page and clicking on demos and webinars. Uh, or you could just follow the link that is shown right here. So let's go back to our model and see where we left off. Okay, so this is the model that we've been working with. So let's look at the state flow chart and see what we've done so far. So, so far we have uh, two parallel states, uh, device logic and fan logic. Let's look at device logic. Uh, it could be in either the device off or device on states. Uh, it turns on when the operator switches it on and uh, make sure that the device is cool when that happens. Um, and the device can turn off if the operator switches it off or the device gets too hot, uh, in which case the fan uh, is also turned off along with the device. Uh, if the device is on, then um, a fan table function is called. So this is shown here in the truth table. And what this does is it uh, determines what should be the mode of the fan. Should it be in the off state, the low state, or the high state? And to decide that, looks at a few conditions, uh, basically the temperature of the device, and uh, determines uh, in which mode the fan should be in. Okay. And uh, last thing is, uh, here's that is cool uh, function, where we check to see if the device is cool or not. That's done using a flowchart. Okay, so let's talk about what we're going to do now. Um, what we're going to do is add a backup fan for our system. So right now we just have a primary fan that could be in either the off, low, or high states. And what we're going to do is add a fault detection system, um, which is a common application for state flow. Okay, so if a fault in our system occurs, we want to be able to respond to that fault. All right. So let's open the fan logic state, and uh, let's talk about how we could do this. Uh, so one way is we could just uh, copy everything that's here and paste it into another state uh, for the backup fan. Okay, so we could do this, um, but that would be a little inefficient because um, we, we would just be copying everything that's here and uh, reusing it. And if we generate code, then you would see basically two copies of the code. Um, which would not be efficient. Okay, so uh, let's be a little more efficient about things. We've actually set ourselves up uh, so that we could be more efficient um, by using this IDX variable. So right now, IDX references the uh, primary fan because IDX is just set equal to zero. But if we set IDX equal to one, uh, then that would reference the backup fan. Okay. Uh, and then when we would use statements like vfan idx equals zero, that would then refer to the backup fan. Okay, so let's set up our uh, fan logic state so that we can um, do this. So what I'm going to do is add a super state to fan logic. So this is similar to what I did with device logic, where we contained everything within a subchart. Okay, and now I have everything contained within fan system. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if the fan is broken every time that the fan system state uh, is active. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to introduce another new stateful concept. And this is the self-transition. So a self-transition is a transition that exits a state and then re-enters that same state. Okay. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if the fan is broken. So there'll be a condition represented by the square bracket on the state. And that condition is going to call a function called isFanBroken. I'm going to feed a few parameters. into this function, the uh, mode of the fan, the speed of the fan, and the current time. Okay, so if you just use t in the state flow, fun uh, state flow chart, and you haven't yet defined t, t will just refer to the simulation time. Okay, so that's uh, a little advanced tip there. All right, so if the fan is broken and idx is equal to zero, that condition is true. We're going to do a few actions, so uh, that's represented by curly brace, that's a condition action, and we'll say that vfan is equal to zero, so we're essentially going to turn the primary fan off by setting the voltage at the fan equal to zero, and then set idx equal to one. And so now we're going to reference the backup fan. Alright, so let's look at our fan system again. Right. Let's suppose that the primary fan is in the fan high state when a failure occurs. Okay. If that's the case, then uh, the failure occurs and we'll exit the state and then re-enter it. When fan system is re-entered, which state is it going to go into? Well, the way it is now, what, what we'd like it to do is to enter the fan high state, but that's not what's going to occur. It's going to follow what's here in the default transition uh, because that's the starting point, and the default transition goes to fan off. Notice also that the default transition uh, says idx is equal to zero. So it's going to override that idx equals one. Um, so we don't want that to happen. Uh, so what we're going to do is override the default transition by using a history junction. All right. So what a history junction does is says uh, if this state has been exited and then it gets re-entered. Okay, and it could get re-entered right now, or it could get re-entered at some point in time. But once it does get re-entered, then go to the state that was last active. Okay, so that's the history part of it. It, it, it stores the last previous active state, and instead of following the, following the default transition, it'll just go into the uh, state that was last active. So in, in that case, where it would be fan high, uh, that would be the uh, the state that it would enter it would not go into fan off okay so I've defined this uh, I've referenced this function is fan broken so now we have to define that function so as I said before um, so far we've used a graphical function um, and a truth table function okay so let's use a third type of function and this is the we're going to use an embedded MATLAB function. Okay, so an embedded MATLAB function is a function that can be defined using the MATLAB language. Uh, specifically, the uh, embedded MATLAB, which is a subset of the MATLAB language, and it can be used to generate code. All right. Uh, so let's open that function. And now this is our embedded MATLAB editor. And I've actually already defined this function called check failure. So this shows how you could um, reference functions within your embedded MATLAB functions. Okay, and if I right click on check failure, I could open it directly here and uh, essentially, this, this code just uh, ch uh, has a bunch of uh, conditional statements and checks to see uh, whether or not the, uh, the fan is broken. Okay. All right. At this point, I think we're ready to run our model and test to see if everything works. Although we're not quite ready yet. Uh, this is the state flow symbol wizard, which we've seen in, pre in a previous part. 
uh, which tells us that there's a variable that we haven't yet defined that we're referencing. Remember, uh, so this is fan RPM, and this will actually be an input variable from Simulink. This will come from our um, our Simulink model. Okay, actually, specifically the fan model. So let's feed that back in. All right, and now we have fan RPM. Let's open the GUI again. Run the model. Okay, now everything is running. And let's open stay flow chart. Okay, we'll turn on our device. Okay. And now we're going to inject a failure. Okay, so we're going to say primary fan failed. All right, you might have seen that that transition uh, highlighted uh, real quick. And the temperature of the device is uh, still the same as uh, where it was. So the primary, the backup fan immediately took over, and uh, and uh, the temperature of the device uh, is is not rising. Okay. So that worked, but um, we probably want to notify the operator if uh, some type of, if the primary fan fails. Right. Uh, just looking at that transition uh, in state flow, e even even just running the simulation, uh, it, it's a little difficult to see uh, whether or not the primary fan has failed or not. I mean, unless you're looking at that transition right then and there, um, it's tough to see. So we'd like to have some type of uh, warning system in place. We'd also like an emergency stop system. What happens if the backup fan fails? Um, you know, then that's not a good situation. Uh, we probably want to turn everything off and, and stop things. Uh, so let's um, let's go back to our top level uh, state flow chart here, and let's add a third parallel state, and this will be our warning state. Warnings. Okay, make that a little bigger. Subchart it. Now, actually, one thing a lot of people like to do is uh, make these states the same size. Um, so let's do that real quick. Make items the same size. All right. Let's go back in the warnings. All right, and let's add some uh, some new logic in here. All right. So I'm going to have a running state and a stop state and running will actually contain a couple of substates one will be OK and another will be warn and to go from OK to warn we're going to have an event. Now, this is a new concept in here. Okay, so we're going to have an event that goes from OK to warn, and from warn to stop will be a second event, and we'll call it E stop. So, what are events? Well, events um, can be triggered. Um, are things that you want to be triggered immediately. Okay, so if something happens, we'll send an event and then we'll immediately tell uh, either Simulink or we'll tell the rest of uh, the state flow chart that something needs to happen. Okay, so we're going to have a situation where we're sending this event eWarn. All right, so let's go back up and where would we send this event? Well, we would send this event uh, within fan system. Okay, so if the fan is broken, then we want to send an event and say that a warning um, needs to needs to occur here. Okay, so let's do that right here. Say so send e warn to the warning state. Okay, so that that's an event broadcast. Now I actually need to define that event. Let's 
call it E warn. And you notice when I do that, uh, E warn gets highlighted in yellow, and that signifies that it's an event. I'm going to do the same thing for E stop. I need to do that as well. Okay, so now we've added an event so that if the primary fan breaks, that um, the operator uh, should be notified um, by sending an event to the warning state. Okay, but what if the backup fan fails? Uh, well, we have to send the e-stop event. All right, so let's make this a little bit more flexible so we can do that. So first I'm going to replace the index from 0 to IDX. All right. And I'm going to change this to a junction. Okay. And I'm going to have one path for when IDX is equal to zero. Okay. So this is if IDX equals zero. And another path. Let's just move that over here for right now. Another path if IDX is not equal to zero. And if that's the case, then we know IDX equals one. Okay. So let's make that a little larger. So if IDX is equal to zero, we're going to do the same things from before. All right. So let's just copy and paste that. All right, we don't need this and IDX equals zero now. Okay. And obviously this needs to go back into the state. Let's put that below so there's no things running into anything there. Okay, and for this one, we're going to send e stop to the warning state. Okay, and we'll connect that up here. And I'll make this bigger just so that there's room for everything here. Okay. Okay, so what does this say? Let's review. This says if the fan is broken, okay, and the fan could be either the primary fan or the backup fan, okay, then check to see. So now we've hit a junction, so now we've got to check these one at a time. It'll check this transition first because it has the number one. Let's say if IDX is equal to zero. Then, now we can move this above, set uh, the voltage of the primary fan equal to zero, and set IDX equal to one, and send the warnings uh, event to uh, send E warn to the warnings state. Okay? Otherwise, send the E stop event to the warning state. Okay? All right, so let's go back into warnings and we need to tell the operator if it enters the warn state, right? So let's right click on warn and let's say output state activity. Okay, so this is an efficient way of uh, not having to create another variable called say warn. Okay, now if I go back up, look at the top level model, I see that I have something here called warn. Okay, so if I put a signal routing, if I go in the signal routing library and put a go to, I've actually set things up. Let's just move this up a little bit. Now go to. Okay, and we've actually already defined this here. Okay, so what will happen is if warn is. Uh, is true, so it's equal to either zero or one, and if it's in the uh, warrant state, then it's equal to one, and it's just going to turn on this uh, LED. 
All right. Uh, last thing we need to do, if we go into warnings, is we need to define what happens if we're in the stop state. Well, if we're in the stop state, then we want to uh, stop the simulation, all right, or actually stop the system. All right, so let's do that. And to do that, we're going to create a uh, our last function here, and this is a simulink function. All right, so a simulink function is a function that is defined in simulink. Okay, and that's just going to be called stop simulation. And we'll call it on entry. And if I double click, here's my simulink function. A little bigger. It's going to be very simple. We're just going to have a constant block. And then that goes to stop simulation. All right, so when this function is activated, it's just going to stop the entire simulation. And let's make this just a little more compact. And there it is. All right, I think we're ready to test our model one last time. Let's move that up a little bit. And it's saying that it's um, driven by type Boolean. OK, so we need to add in a data conversion block. Um, for our go to, because right now it's expecting a, uh, a double. OK, so now and it outputs as a Boolean and expects a double. So let's run that again okay it looks like everything's working now although oh so this is something that uh, you, you might see a lot if you use state flow um, so if we close I know what happened here we didn't add any default transitions this is something that happens to me uh, all the time. So just remember to add your default transitions. So anytime you see no unconditional path to a uh, state, it means that you don't have default transitions. All right, so that's, that's a good error to see because I, I think it's a pretty common one. All right, now we're ready to, to run here. So let's turn our device on again. All right. We have a primary fan failure. There's our LED that turns on. And now, and we, we could actually see in the logic, it's in the warn state. All right, and last thing, if we have a backup fan failure, the simulation should just stop. And it does. OK, so that wraps up the presentation. Uh, let's go back and wrap things up. So what did we cover uh, in part three? Uh, so first we saw the history junctions uh, and see how that could over, override uh, our default transition. Uh, so basically it stores the last active state um, when it's exited and then gets re-entered. Okay? Uh, we saw self-transitions and how um, you, know, you can create a transition that exits a, a state and then returns back to that state. And we saw that was useful for checking uh, whether or not the primary or backup fans um, were broken. Uh, we saw embedded MATLAB functions, how you could use the MATLAB language within Stateflow. Uh, we saw event broadcasting, which is useful for sending information from one parallel state to another. We saw output state activity, which is useful for telling Simulink uh, whether or not uh, one of your substates is active or not. And last, we saw how you can embed Simulink uh, directly uh, inside of your Stateflow chart. All right, so in conclusion, uh, if you want to learn um, or see more about Stateflow, uh, we have a lot of information on the Stateflow product page. Uh, for example, a uh, number of user stories to show you how our customers uh, use Stateflow and uh, also a, a number of demos if you want to see uh, some more applications of Stateflow. 
uh, now this uh, three-part webinar series, uh, this really just gave a broad brush of state flow showing you some of the major concepts. But if you really want to dive into details, uh, we do have a training course, which is one full day, uh, where you get some hands-on experience with state flow and uh, get taught by uh, a state flow expert. So uh, if you're interested in that, there's a website there uh, for more information. Uh, if you did not see parts one or two of this webinar series, uh, you could go to the Stateful product page and click on demos and webinars and find it there, find both parts there, uh, or you could follow the link that is shown here. Uh, and last, if you're interested in an on-site demonstration of Stateflow, uh, please contact your MathWorks account representative. Uh, so with that, I thank you for uh, watching and we'll see you next time.